the Jubilee Year of Mercy, the Catholic Church in the Holy Land will open the Holy Doors in four churches. The Pontifical Silesian University inaugurates the academic year with a lecture by Archbishop Stanislaw Gadecki on the Synod of the Family. The Sisters of the Holy Family in Nazareth celebrate the 140th anniversary of the congregation with a Mass at the headquarters of the Latin Patriarchate in Nazareth. There was a gathering of young people in Nazareth before the Feast of Christ the King to prepare them for the Jubilee Year of Mercy. At a Mass to celebrate the establishment of the Fraternity of the Daughters of the Sacred Hearts in Bethlehem, the first eight members of the fraternity pronounce the evangelical promises. In the Armenian neighborhood of the old city in Jerusalem, we discover one of the oldest traditional crafts of the holy city, handed down from generation to generation. The Jubilee Year of Mercy will begin on December the 8th with the opening of the Holy Door at St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. In addition to the opening of the Holy Doors in Rome, Pope Francis has granted to bishops around the world the ability to designate in their diocese a church or a shrine in which the Door of Mercy will be open to ensure that all the faithful participate in this event. Here in the Holy Land, the following churches will open the Doors of Mercy, the Basilica of Gethsemane in Jerusalem, the Church of St. Catherine in Bethlehem, the Basilica of the Annunciation in Nazareth, and the Sanctuary of the Madonna del Monte in Anjara, Jordan. La porta un simbolo, quando uno passa in... The door is a symbol. When someone enters, they pass through a door. They come from one place and enter another. It is a symbol. We leave a state of sin, a state of weakness, to come into a new situation, a new state of life. For me, this is a symbol of the return to the Lord, a symbol of conversion. To receive the indulgence, the faithful are called to make a short pilgrimage to the Holy Door, to turn to the sacrament of confession, participate in the Eucharistic celebration and reflect on mercy, to profess the faith, to pray for the Pope and his intentions, and for the Church and the world. The world of so many hatred, war, terrorist attacks, uncertainties of people, hate, violence between people, mistrust. We need this year of mercifulness to reflect what does it mean for us, for relationships in the families, in our society and so on. And therefore I think this year of mercy is, has a very big impact and importance for all Christi Christian people in the world. Those who cannot go to where there is a holy door, like the elderly, the sick and prisoners, will receive the Jubilee indulgence by experiencing suffering with faith and hope, by receiving communion or participating in the celebration of the Holy Mass even through the media. Hopefully I will be more closer to the Lord and bring others closer to the Lord. With little sacrifices, with more prayers and as we walk through the Holy Land, in the letter in which he highlighted the important points for the Holy Year, Pope Francis has defined mercy as the path that unites God and humanity because mercy opens our hearts to the hope of being loved forever despite the taint of our sin. The best door to use during this year of mercy is the confessional door. Let us return to the Lord, admit our weaknesses, our limitations and our human misery, asking the Lord for forgiveness and mercy. These are my best wishes for the faithful, that they enter this beautiful door, which brings them hope in these difficult times. More than ever, we need to return to the Lord. By crossing the door of mercy, as the Pope said, every believer will be able to experience the love of God, which comforts, forgives and gives hope. Education is a matter of the heart, said Father Giovanni Bosco. With this quote, the Dies Academicus of the Pontifical Silesian University began in Jerusalem on Thursday, November the 19th, 2015. Staff and students filled the conference room at the Silesian Monastery of Ratisbon to participate in the university's annual event. 
The special guest this year was the Archbishop of Poznan, Stanislaw Gadecki, President of the Episcopal Conference of Poland. He gave a lecture entitled The Synod on the Family, its interpretation of the vocation and mission of the family in the church and in the contemporary world. The novelty of this year's synod is certainly evident in many aspects of the theology of marriage and family. Among these were the issue of homosexuals and communion for couples united by civil marriage after divorce. A very important topic was the way the Church expresses her love for marriage and family. This year there definitely was a much deeper understanding of this topic. There was great progress in the text of the Ratio Finalis in comparison to that of the Instrumentum Laboris of last year. During the day, the title of Professor Emeritus was awarded to Father Pier Giorgio Giannazza, who was also presented with a silver medal, a sign of recognition of his long and valuable service in Jerusalem. Also two new diplomas from the Pontifical University were introduced, one in Biblical Geography and History, the other in Interreligious Dialogue and Ecumenism. These two new diplomas were created today at our headquarters in Jerusalem because of the specific presence of the Pontifical Salesian University here. There are 17 affiliated centers around the world in the Faculty of Theology, and here in Jerusalem we find the specific traits of the land of Jesus that should be explored, the geography, the history, but also the interreligious dialogue. I believe that the vocation of a study center as a faculty of theology is precisely to train those who will later in turn train others. It is a wide-ranging action. It is like when you throw a stone into a lake. We do not know how far this wave will expand but we do know for sure that it will expand. The notes of the polyphonic singing God's Spirit is in my heart concluded the event, suggesting that the development of the wave is unpredictable but in good hands. One hundred and forty years ago, a special mission to care for families was founded in this church. The Congregation of Sisters of the Holy Family of Nazareth was founded in Rome in 1875 by Francisca Sidliska, known today as Blessed Mary of Jesus the Good Shepherd. Born into a noble Polish family that was indifferent to religion, Francisca experienced a conversion and felt God's call to found a congregation that would promote spirituality and care for families. She was a woman who wanted to find what God wants from her, what God from, wants from the congregation. And she always said to the sisters, we have to go there where the church is calling us. Today, the sisters live and serve in 170 communities scattered throughout 13 countries in five continents. In the Holy Land, they are present in Nazareth and Haifa, where they aid the local church and run a school. In addition to their work, prayer is part of the sisters' daily life. Wherever we are in 13 countries, each sister each day pray for the families. It is our, you can say, our mission, whatever we do, because we, we do different works, but always we think about the families and uh, each sister, each day, pray for the families. In Nazareth, a mass was celebrated at the headquarters of the Latin Patriarchate in the presence of the religious communities of the Holy Land. The foundress gave a wonderful example of mercy and of consecrated life. And today the sisters in our country, here in Nazareth, in Haifa, in the Holy Land, continue in this mission to give a witness 
of mercy and of love and of consecrated life. The congregation includes 10 religious who were beatified in the year 2000 by Pope John Paul II. During the Second World War, they were martyred for giving up their lives in exchange for the release of people who had families. They, before they died, they prayed, My God, if sacrifice of life is needed, we ask that we are executed instead of those who have their own families. And they are examples that they gave their life to save the families. Even after 140 years, the mission founded by Blessed Mary of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, continues to support families through the gift of life and prayer. Coming from various cities in the north of the Holy Land, on the Saturday before the Feast of Christ the King, they gathered at the College of the Franciscan Custody in Nazareth to spend a day of formation and spirituality. Our meeting today was very important to validate our presence here as Christians in the Holy Land. It was important to prove our identity and demonstrate the purpose of the Bible and the Christian message preached on earth. This is the second of these meetings, sponsored by the Latin Patriarchate in Nazareth. These young people came to meet in the first place and to give thanks to the Lord. They also gathered here to discuss their problems, but mainly to explore the mercy of God. How beautiful it is that today's young people are able to forgive and accept others. The program included conferences, debates, theatre performances and the celebration of the Eucharist over which the vicar of the Latin Patriarchate, Monsignor Giacinto Marcuzzo, presided. The youth meeting was a preparation for the Jubilee Year of Mercy, which is about to start. This was one of the leading topics in Father Osama's talk. So everybody needs to hear more and to know what mercy is in order to be able to practice mercy. If we, and if we start to talk about mercy to the younger ages, we are sure that when they will become uh, older, they will have already internalized these, this knowledge and these feelings of mercy. God is mercy and love, even when we commit sins or mistakes. God will always love us. He gives us his heart and loves us more. So we learn his mercy from him and learn how to treat our brothers with love and mercy. In a land surrounded by conflicts between peoples, frequently fueled by revenge, this topic is a necessary challenge. There is sometimes a lot of violence, there is sometimes a lot of hatred, but our Christianity and our Christ, our Jesus, uh, teaches us that if we respond to violence by violence, to hatred by hatred, uh, they will never finish, they will never stop. So it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge, but with the help of God and with the force of Jesus Christ, we will be able to defend ourselves without getting into hatred or violence. Despite their young age, this group shows they have learned the lesson of the day, and now they are ready to teach this lesson with the innate joy of youth. Mercy is very important. The starting point of mercy is the existence of God in our lives, which is also the basis of love and acceptance of others. <laughs> This family of the sisters of St. Dorothy is not formed only by the nuns, but also by lay people who want to experience our spirituality. Here at the Afeta Institute of Bethlehem, the secular aggregated fraternity of Palestine is born. This fraternity was formed because there were lay people who wanted to have a more profound marriage experience. The desire to participate in our spirituality has grown gradually in their hearts. Today, eight lay people publicly promise to live according to the evangelical councils after a long spiritual preparation. They are not religious. 
They are mothers and fathers. They just want to live their normal everyday life with a true Christian spirit. Uno spirito più cristiano. The evangelical promises were made during the heart of the Eucharistic celebration. We are not used to laity who take this kind of strong commitment of poverty, chastity and obedience. After the evangelical promises, the booklet that contains the rule of life and a lamp in the shape of a heart were handed to them. The lamp evokes the love of the heart of Jesus and Mary, which forms a characteristic spirituality of the congregation. The ritual is simple, but the spiritual content is very strong. I thank God for these moments. I know there will be many difficulties, but Jesus Christ strengthens and helps me, and I know that my brothers will help too. We thank God for this beautiful occasion. Today's event can be a positive signal for the whole Church of the Holy Land, a beginning and an encouragement for many others to follow. Even here in this land of struggle, where our faith is very hard to live, there are people who have the courage to face this commitment of life in the most radical way. We are truly rejoicing as after a new birth. The timeliness and fruitfulness of the charism of the Sisters of the Sacred Hearts is deeply appreciated. This is a great event which brings us joy, because we want to be their big sisters. We want to be with them. It is really a very important day for us. In the alleys of the Armenian neighborhood of the old city of Jerusalem lives an Armenian family that has made ceramic and porcelain craftsmanship its profession and livelihood. Family members work together so as to avoid losing this ancient tradition brought to the city long ago and now one of its hallmarks. The family also comes together to highlight and show its historical, cultural and civil characteristics. الخزف الأرمني تبعنا اللي بنشوفه هلا بالقدس أصل أصله من تركيا. The origin of Armenian porcelain in Jerusalem dates back to the 16th century, to the territories inhabited by the Armenians in Turkey, such as Kortahia. At that time, Turkish Sultan Suleiman decided to restore the Dome of the Rock, the famous mosque in Jerusalem, going from wood to ceramics, and so he summoned Armenian craftsmen from Kortahia to paint the tiles. Two or three years after arriving with their families, they could not return home any longer because of massacres in Turkey. I started this business with my husband 30 years ago. We have so many Armenian symbols that we use in our art. I'm drawing birds which in our art form symbolize long life. We also depict many images from the Gospel, such as symbols of freedom and abundance or prayers. We meet another Armenian family, the Caucasians. Hajob inherited the profession from his grandfather, and now he is the owner of the store in the heart of the old city of Jerusalem. He explains how he makes porcelain according to the ancient Armenian method. This I learned from I learned this trade from my father, just as he learned it from his. This means that I represent the third generation that has continued this art form in Jerusalem. You see, at this point you introduce the colors, then you work on the outer part of the piece, outlining the design, and then M. Andre decorates the outside. After that, M. Isa fills the drawing with colors. This dish is ready. First, it is soaked in a special glaze, then it is dried placed in the oven and heated to about 1,000 degrees. Then it is ready for use. Terra Santa News is a production of the Christian Media Center in Jerusalem Holy Land. 
For more information about Terra Santa News and the Christian Media Center, please check out our website at the bottom of the screen. You'll also be able to subscribe to our newsletter to view live video feeds from the Holy Land as well as visit our Facebook and YouTube pages and follow our Twitter feed. Come visit the website of Terra Santa News.